Hello and welcome back to my elegant Banggood build. I think that's the name I'm going to go with, but it might change um, when we get later in this build. Um, today we're going to be putting together the Gep RC KHX6 Elegant frame, um, which is going to be used in my build. So that's a, a nice little undersung frame, which is very similar to uh, the Remix. It's not a knockoff; it is a legitimate. Um, it is a legitimate frame. Um, so we'll be taking you step by step how to build it. So the first thing we're going to do is get out all the parts. So here is everything that comes in the box. So you have your instructions, you have the uh, LED light, which is a nice little connection and a buzzer on the back. You have various pieces of foam that I'm not 100% sure what all they're, they're all for, but I'm sure I'll find a use for all the bits of foam. You get a nice little XT60 pre-solders, so you don't have to do all the soldering in, in this bit here. So that is really, really useful. You get a nice little TPU antenna mount, which will be useful for connecting your video transmitter and aerials to. You get a nice little sticky top plate, which um, I might use something slightly different for, but we'll look at that later in the series. Um, you get aluminium front end and rear standoffs, and you get all the carbon that goes with it and all the screw screws. One of the things that's quite nice is you get these little, um, the, you get the Allen keys that are designed to go with to support building this. I probably won't use these, I'll probably use my own um, tools, but they are in there if you're interested. Right, so um, let's get the screws out of here and we'll put them into a little pot. Uh, every time I do a build, I always end up with, um, so I have a load of little, there we go. We have a load of these little pots that I use, so when I then unscrew, undo these, let me get a knife. I don't lose anything. Um, these come with motors. I think every motor I have has some kind of like plasticky container and I just find those incredibly useful for storing things in. Apologies, it's um, raining in the UK for the first time in about nine weeks so it's pretty noisy in, uh, in my garage where I do all my filming so apologies for the background noise. Right, so that's all your screws etc. So let's um, get out all the, the carbon fibre parts and we'll just check the edges of all of those. Okay, so that's everything. Um, so we've got the nice little aluminium front ends. They're really very, very light and very nicely made, actually. They're nicely machined. Um, they're not uh, titanium like uh, the Rooster front end, but they are They are nice. They're really, really light. Um, this is the little LED... Ooh, let me see if we get the camera focus. There we go. This is the LED back end. So you've got six LEDs uh, programmable, um, and you have the um, buzzer on the back and a little cable that goes into that. So that's quite nice. That makes that nice and easy to build and I will be putting that into the build today. Um, and we've got the carbon fibre. So let's have a little feel of the carbon fibre arms. Yeah, that's really nice. They've actually um, beveled the arms. So they are nowhere near as sharp as um, some of the arms I've had in, in history. I mean, you used to have to go and sand the arms down. But um, in this case, I don't think... I need to. Uh, it's a little bit sharp, but, but not too bad. So um, what we now need to do is decide where we're going to start. The top plate. So this is the top plate, and this is the little plate that goes underneath it. This way is facing forward, so the metal pieces will be around about here. But what we need to do is fit the sunk nuts into this piece. Now, I know that my board wants the the power cable, the XT60, to come out on this side. So therefore I want to make sure that this is on, this piece here is on that side. I'm not going to do left and right because I have to flip my camera recording round and that will uh, really confuse the hell out of everyone. So what I need to do is fit my sunk nuts into this piece. Now how I do that, um, if you watch my rooster build, I did it with a hammer, don't do it that way. Um, what I found the easiest way of doing it is that you get the sunk nuts in and then you use a large headed nut and if you've got a washer you can use a washer but I don't have one to hand and then you then use that to then draw the sunk nuts into the into the build so I'm just going to make sure I get this the right way around so these go into the bottom so I'm just going to turn it over place the sunk nut into the hole 
we go, get the screw and just tighten that up ever so slightly so that comes through. There we go. So now what I can do is I can now get my oh this looks like a no it's not it's a 2.5 isn't it? There we go, 2.5 mil uh, crosshead and I can then just tighten this up ever so slowly and as it just pulls it in and it tightens up I can then let it go and that is then in the build. So therefore that's gone in nicely and it's nice and secure and I can now do the same for each other part. To know when doing this is that you don't want to over tighten this so you want to pull it in just enough so that it draws itself down and then once you feel resistance that it's not going to turn anymore then you stop. I had a problem with one of these where I overdid it and it then started to spin in the um, in the hole so you don't really want that and I had to then back it out with a pair of um, pliers so just nicely gently draw it in and then when you feel that the tension is it's just seated nicely and it stops rotating that's where you stop. Put all your sunken nuts in Focus, 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 there we go. Um, you then need to then fit the top plate and sandwich the arms. So what you're gonna to need to do this is you will need some of your M3 16 millimeter flathead bolts. So they will look like this. And you will need some M3 10 millimeter round head bolts that look like this. So these will go into the countersunk holes and these ones will go in the outer holes. So let's fit an arm. So the little hole that goes to the ESC wires should be on the inside. So I'm just going to get this in place, put that through, and then I'm going to screw that into that. Oh, it's not that screwdriver. Uh, so it is a not that one. So you will need to use a two millimeter screwdriver. Uh, not screwdriver, hex. Hex driver, that's the one we're looking for. So that should screw through. So that goes into there. And then we should then be able to put a little smaller one into here, like that. And we should screw that through into there. Now I haven't screwed this one all the way through because I didn't want to, because um, it probably needs to go into something else, so I'm just going to leave it there for the time being. Um, but I'm now going to now do all the other arms. So all I'm going to do is slide it in, put the main bolt in the middle, screw it down, wait till it just comes through on the other side like so, And I can put the outside bolt in. There we go. And do the back arms. Exactly the same process. Right, so there we go. Uh, it moves around a little bit at the moment. I think that's because I haven't tightened everything down as much as I as I need to, but I'm sure once I've tightened this all up, it will stop moving about. Right, so let's move on to the next bit. Okay, so now we're going to do the um, side plate and front end, so we're going to screw these in together. So these are nice and straightforward. You will get in here some little 2M 6mm screws. So you'll need to have a, a 1.5 millimeter, whoop, 1.5 millimeter screwdriver for these. So all you're going to simply do, pop that on the end there, find the corresponding hole, screw that in. There we go, and then we then do the same on the back, like so. I'm not over tightening anything at the moment because I'm not sure where you need to have the, the real rigidity in this. Um, so I'm not going to over tighten these for today. Um, 
the next one to do will be the other side. So let's get that, and let's get that, and that, and then we'll do the same process again. Okay, that's now tightened up. So now we have the top plate, the two side plates. Um, so we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so we've uh, got our sides done. We've got our bottom plate, which is a two mil bottom plate, and we've got our little. Um, these are uh, da -da 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 -da, these are M3 six millimeter screws. So um, that's what you want to use on the base. So all we're going to do is we're going to point the swift looking thing into the front end, pop that into the hole like that, get I think it's a 2.5, no no no, 2 mil driver wherever it is, there it is, and we'll just tighten that up. Oh, no we don't, stupid boy, we need to put this in. So all we're going to do is we find the little gaps, Make sure this is the right way up. Slide that into there. Then we screw the back in. Make sure the holes are all lined up. There we go. And then screw the back down. There we go. And tighten that up. And make sure those bolts are all tightened. Right. Finally, now we need to just join the top part to the bottom part and then put the front standoffs in. So to join the top part to the bottom part, we simply need to take these little uh, M3 flathead, uh, I think they're 8mm uh, bolts, slide the top on, get those in, screw that down, Do the same across all the others. I don't think these are, these are titanium bolts, so don't over tighten them. You will probably strip them. But I want to just do them up tight enough. Oh, nearly forgot. We want to put this here at the back. So we're just going to put it so it's the so the big holes are on the bottom, and we're just going to screw that down, like so. It's quite nice it comes with a TPU printed um, part. It's uh, Normally you'd have to buy those separately. So just screw that down, make sure that's actually in the hole. Okay, and then finally we need to do these little standoffs. So these are da -da -da -da, these 3M pieces. So all I'm going to do is place these into the gaps. Which might be more easy if I'd have done it earlier, but there we go. Put the screws through. I'm going to finger tighten that in. Get another M3 10 mil. Screw that in. Tighten that up. Come on. There we go. And the bottom one. I'm just going to screw that to the point where it's nearly there. Push this into the gap like so. And then just tighten this one up. Hold this if it stops rotating. Uh, 
and then do this one up. There we go. So that is our build. So that's the frame all built together. Um, as you can see there's some nice little touches in there. You've got a good bit of space underneath to, to hang your items. Obviously we haven't got a camera in there at the moment. I'll probably have to do a little bit of work to get the camera in and uh, sorted. Nice little TPU mount on the back with an LED and buzzer. So um, yeah, it looks it looks pretty nice. Um, if you're following me along with this build, um, they do a 6 inch, this is the 6 inch version from Banggood. I think there is a 7 inch version, but I haven't seen that on Banggood. Um, they do a 5 inch version, which if you're looking to do a, a more of a race style quad, um, you can pick one of those up. They're, they're not that expensive either. Um, they also do a 4 inch, but I, I don't really know many people who fly 4 inches. I know more people who fly 3 inches and 2 inches. I don't find that many people who fly 4s. Um, these could all be picked up from Banggood. Um, Please consider um, following the rest of these videos if you are finding me for the first time. Um, and I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time. Thank you.